So I've run into a small issue with the uh, shaping bar with the clapper here. And what I discovered is after I put the bar in there and, and go to tighten the nut up on the other side, that it's trying to move the bar. The bar won't stay where I want it to be. And I, I was hoping that just the pressure of all this, the flange would pull up, would uh, eliminate that. But it's, it's not going to go away, so I'm going to have to address it. So I've been thinking about how I wanted to do this, and there's, there's several different ways you could do it. But the, the most obvious way for me that I think that I want to do this is to be able to index this bar in this counter bore at a you know, 12 o'clock position and then going around either side the way I want, you know, to be able to clock this bar once it's stuck in there. So, you know, if this tool is straight up, just call that zero. Be able to pull it in there and then maybe uh, be able to rotate it 30 degrees, 45 degrees, you know, things like that, either, either direction. And pull up on a pin and then once it's on that pin, it can't rotate. And then I can get in there and tighten this nut up, no problem. So what I'm going to do is inside this block right here, this clapper, I'm going to go right in here at the 12 o'clock position, right, right in here on this counter bore. I'm going to use this 1-8 dial pin. This is a hardened pin. And I'm going to drill and ream it. And I'm going to install that 1-8 pin right there. And then I'm going to set this bar up in the mill, and I'm going to drill a series of holes around one half of this. There's no reason to have to go all the way around. So, you know, you'll have a 12 o'clock pin, and that should align the tool bit straight up and down, exactly straight up and down when it's on this pin, and then have some other indexing holes so that I can rotate the bar either direction all the way around 90 degrees if I want to, if we're going in there on the side. So we'll have half of it drilled for uh, clearance for a 1 8 hole so that it can slip in. We'll be able to slide it up in here whenever I'm setting the bar okay so we'll be able to that'll be up and down with the tool bit and be able to just pull it right in there and line up on that pin and if I need to index it be able to push it out rotate it pull it back in and then hopefully that pin will will be plenty to keep this bar from rotating whenever we're snugging this nut up so that is the project at hand and that's what I'm going to get started on I'm going to use the blake coax to get this hole indicated sender. Looks like showing about a half dial. It's going to be close enough. So now we're in the center. I'm going to uh, zero out the digital readout up there. I'm going to track this out of here. So our inner bore is two and a quarter. Our counter bore diameter is two and three quarter. So if you split the difference of that, that's actually two and a half inch. So we want to go right in the middle of that counter bore right there. So that's going to be a two and a half inch. Two and a half inch uh, circle diameter, so we're going to split that in half to go halfway, that's inch and a quarter. Right there. Okay, here we go. We're going to spot it with a center drill, and then I'm going to drill it with this drill bit. I did find a 1 8 reamer, by the way, and I forgot. I think this is a number 32 drill, it's around 116 thousandths. So we are correct on our, actually our 1,000th over, let me go back, on my center distance is what I was talking about. I'm also going to measure how deep I drill this using my 
Michitoya Quill DRO up here. I think what I'll do is just come down here and touch it since I just spotted it. I'm just going to touch it and I'm going to zero this out. It's above you here. It's a little, looks like a little dial indicator or digital indicator, I mean. Okay. Measuring how long the pin is. All right, so we've got a half inch pin. So we'll, we'll just do half of that. We'll go a quarter inch. Zero. So now let's go in there with our reamer. I don't have my air on right now. I didn't think to turn it on, so I'm just having to brush it out. Let's see if it's going to fit. Looks like it will. Yeah, it's pushing in there too but with, with my hand. There we go. Alright, hopefully that'll, that'll stay. If it comes out, I can put a little dab of uh, Loctite on there, but that might stay. So what we'll do is we'll drill our the bar flange a little bit of clearance so it'll clear the hole and not be so tight. Okay, so here's my setup for the bar. I've got this V-block clamped down using these strap clamps here, and this is the clamp that's going to hold it in there. And what, I'm, what I am going to do, let's just put it loose there. What I'm going to do is go ahead and indicate it. So we've got a tool bit down at the bottom held in where the, where the square tool bit goes. And I'm going to indicate this. We'll put an indicator over here and we'll traverse the, the Y axis back and forth until I get this thing bumped around so that it's perfectly true. And that'll line up with our first pinhole at the top of the flange right there. All right, let's see if we can get this thing indicated in. By the way, I got my uh, co-worker, Ken, he's over there doing some work on some of his stuff, so that's what the other noise is. All right, so we're a little high there. I'm going to try to use this little hammer here and see if we can manipulate that thing a little bit. Not much. look too bad it's looking pretty good right there let me snug these things up and see if it'll stay not too bad I think we're gonna be able to live with that Maybe a thousand. I don't think that's going to matter. We know that we're going to be nice and straight right there, so we're going to call that good. All right, we're going to use the Blake coax again to uh, indicate the OD of the shaft, get it centered. That's within a half a thou right there. We're going to call that good. I'm going to zero out the readout. Okay, all right, good to go. Yeah. We're gonna use the diesel readout, the uh, bolt circle function to put the holes that we want. So I decided that I'm gonna have eight pinholes for this thing to rotate, or 16. If you're looking at the full circle, it'll be 16 divisions. So that'll allow me to index it every 22 and a half degrees. So I'll be able to go from zero, 22 and a half, 45, and so on. So let's go into 
our function right here, F function. PCD is pitch circle diameter, and you're going to hit enter there. And then this is the center. We're already centered, and we have this on zero, zero, so that we want to start in the center of our workpiece where we're at now. All right, so our diameter is going to be two and a half, 2.5. Number of holes is going to be 16. Now we're only going to be doing half of those. We're going to be doing eight of them. Enter. And then the angle is the angle at which we want to start the first hole. So I want the first hole to be, a, if you're looking at the parts, it's going to be like 6 o'clock position. It's going to be 270 degrees. Let me see. 9, 8, yeah. 270. Enter. All right. And hit go. Bam. So this is our y axis right there. So that's going to move us an inch and a quarter over to our, that'll be our zero first pin location right there to line up our tool straight up and down. Let's go ahead and step it over to our first hole. I've got a 1 8 drill bit in there. That's one of my short uh, screw machine link drill bits there. That's got a very good grind on it. So we'll just come down and Take it nice and easy. I think what I'll do is I got another one of those pins. I might go grab that pin and check it and see if it goes in that hole. If not, we'll go back in there with a number 30 drill bit. That's three thousandths over this one here and then redrill them. There's one of them other pins. Oh yeah. May not need it. I think we'll just leave it. Leave it like that. Well, let's go to our next hole. I'm just going to show you a couple of these. I don't want to bore you to death with moving the, the handles here. And I'll show you the readout. Let's go ahead and do our next hole. There we go. Hole three. So we got the first, we got the first half of them done. Now I'm just going to work my way back the other way. We're at the first location, so you can work backwards with the bow hole circle. I'll, I'll show you guys. That's real nice. You can cycle through whatever hole you want, you know. So we were, we were going forward to hole five. Now we're back to hole one, and then we can just go backwards, 16, 15, 14, and so on. So that's what we'll do. We'll do the whole 16 and get the other quarter side done. So I've got a stop up here on my quill that I'm bringing it down to. I'm going to leave it right there. And I'm going to run the quill up. I'm sorry, run the knee up with the crank handle. Just to break that edge right there. All right, nice little bevel. Now I'm gonna go back. We're gonna go back to my other hole locations. And just spot them, just like that. There we go. I think we're ready to go out with it. There we go. Let's go test it, see if it works. So how many of you guys were sleeping at the wheel while I was drilling them holes? And who says you can't fix stupid? I can certainly fix it. I managed to get the holes to go all the way through just like I needed it. <laughs> so let's see if this thing is going to fit properly now. There we go. It works. 
I was drilling them holes, man, and I didn't even, it didn't even occur to me that I was coming from the other side. I was just thinking of this side only. So, you know, just stupidity and not thinking right. Let's see if how it indexes. So that that's going to be at our straight up and down position there. Let's see if we want to go over to 45. There it is. It's nice and snug too. Now that wiggle is just from it loose in the bore there. But that is going to work nice. Be able to index the tool and now be able to tighten up the uh, the nut. That is going to work. Now I can tighten this nut up and I don't have to worry about the bar twisting. You know, beats having to put flats on there and hold it with a wrench. I just think that was a pretty, a very simple solution to that right there. I had, I had thoughts of maybe like adding a set screw or something in there, but that means, you know, you're going to be back in here behind the, uh, where it's going to be hidden. So I just like that idea right there. That's going to work out good. So since I've got the mill already set up, I am going to repeat that process with this longer bar right here. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing that you just seen me do. I'm going to get this finished up and then I want to go to the shaper and hopefully uh, mount this back up and try it out. All right, we got the, the long bar drilled. go awesome really liking this being able to drop it in where I want it very cool all right I got the clapper reinstalled snugged up enough where it'll it'll hold it in place there like that I'm gonna go ahead and get this nut on there there we go now we can tighten that thing up and it's not gonna move and hopefully our tool or at least our square anyway is perfectly indexed straight up and down. Let's see how it reacts if I want to index it around one notch. I'll just back the nut out some. There we go. There it is, Knock, notched around 22 and a half degrees. Very cool. I love it. Mm -hmm.